First and foremost, we're going to cover blurring an image. To do this, we start off with our example image. I'm using the bridge in this one. We're going to keep it in color, so I don't need to convert it to grayscale here, but rotating, creating a copy, and this is the image that we're going to be starting with today. To do a blur, we need to understand some of the concepts. We create something that's called a blur mask. Okay, This mask will then be applied to all the pixel values of the image. To do this, let's take a look at our image again. Right, These are values. Our images are values. Remember that. And I'm just going to isolate one of the channels of IMG. Let's just take the all the first 640, all the second 480, and then just one of the RGB color channels. And I'm going to save it as the variable channel. It's in our workspace. Let's go ahead and open this up. And it's just a massive array of numbers. And this is only one of the three RGB color channels. A mask is going to be applied to a certain range of these values. Let's say I'm trying to edit this value right here at location 5, 5. It's 158 here. If we're going to blur, then we're going to take an average of the surrounding pixel values. So now all of these values will be averaged and we'll replace this 5 by 5 value with the new average. This would be an example of a 3 by 3, right? 3 pixels by 3 pixels blur mask. You can also do larger blur masks. Let's say if our center is 5, 5, we went all the way from 1 out until 10 or something like that here. Then this would be a 10 by 10 blur mask. And we'd average over all these values. Remember, each of these values represents a single pixel value in one of the RGB channels. We average over all these values and replace this 5, 5 number by the average of all of that. So you can imagine the larger the mask, the more blurry our image will be. Heck, you could do a 100 by 100, and you'd be incorporating all these different values and then just replacing that center value with the average. Let's go back now and apply a blur. We start by creating the blur using the F special function. This is a great one to look up. Either do help F special or go ahead and do doc F special. Very good one to look up. We're going to be using the average blur mask as I just mentioned. And then we're going to do the seven by seven. So seven is the number of pixels that you want to form as the square around your, uh, your individual pixel that you're changing. That just gives you the mask. Then you need to use that mask with the IM filter command. You give it the image you want to add the mask to, and then you give it the name of the mask, blur. And I'm overwriting the image variable as such, and then I'm showing the raw image next to the edited image here. We go ahead and run this, and here we get the side by side. On the left is the very sharp clear image, and on the right, you can see we start to lose clarity. If I really open this up and do, let's say, a 30 by 30 blur mask, now the image is almost becoming unrecognizable, and you can keep doing this larger and larger. Let's do 100 and see how this looks. Kind of garbage, but you get the idea here. One interesting thing about blurs is that it gets rid of all the noise, right? You really can't tell that we have plants at the bottom of the screen anymore. It's just kind of created a, a green blob. Same thing with the sky. If I showed you the picture on the right, you wouldn't guess there was a bridge going through that. Can this be helpful? Oddly enough, it can be. And of course, there's various reasons that you might want to blur an image, but it actually can help us with our thresholding that we looked at in the last video. I'm going to convert the image to RGB to gray. So we're going to go back to grayscale now. I'm going to call a threshold out here and then binarize the image on that threshold, and I'll show you that output pair. So now, just to review, we're starting off here by blurring the image, and then we're converting it to grayscale, and then taking a threshold on it. 
Look at this. Now we end up with a very clear region up here of what the sky might be. Now we did lose some detail, right? The very top of the image, because of all the blurs that we applied here, we lose the very top, but we also got rid of the bridge very nicely. Some things to think about, blurring can really help you in reducing the noise. And as you might be starting to see, well heck, what if we changed the blur to a smaller mask? Maybe 50 by 50, and ran this with the same threshold. Uh, well now we're getting, that bridge is showing up a little bit in the middle. We're getting some of the, the waterfall here, and then probably this lower piece of ice is also showing up. But you can understand that computer vision, image processing, these are all just knobs that we're turning. I can change this threshold value to be something different. I can change the blur to get something different. And choosing these values are essential to good image processing. More advanced methods like machine learning, they'll have ways to grab these values for you. But when you're doing your own kind of adaptive approach, it's okay to just turn the knobs and experiment. That's all for this video. We'll get going on more in the next.